Hi everyone, it's me. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alana and I'm a Canadian, but I have been living here in the UK for the last seven years now. I love learning about British culture and I'm still doing that seven years on. And one of the best ways to do that is through British TV. However, not all British television is created equal. <laughs> now think back to what is the most outrageous, controversial, wild British TV show, okay? Pull that up in your mind, think about that, picture it for better or for worse. And I bet quite a few of us are thinking about the same one. So what did I do? I sat down and I watched a bunch of full length episodes of Naked Attraction. And I have some thoughts. And this video is almost going to be immediately demonetized. So if you wanna support me, please join me on Patreon. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, so where do we even begin? <laughs> okay, let's start at the beginning, just in case you have not watched Naked Attraction as I had not. Now, of course, I knew the lore, I knew the myth of Naked Attraction, I had seen some clips, but I had never um, forced myself to sit down and watch an entire show. Um, and now I, I can't unsee what I've seen. Do you know what I mean? I'm getting ahead of myself. If you haven't had the pleasure of seeing this show before. Basically, there's one person who's trying to find a date, right? It's a dating show, if you can call it that. And on stage, there are six, six boxes, um, six coffins, really, six brightly lit um, rectangles that potential dates are standing in. Now, the, um, gimmick of this particular show is yes, naked in the title is legit. So we start the show, <laughs> the, the coffins, the neon boxes, the front panel lifts up to about sort of the waist section on everybody and everybody is naked. So there is a person um, trying to find a date and all they can see are just six sets of genitals. Did I say this video is gonna get demonetized? Please join me on Patreon. Now, to the uninitiated, maybe think, well, surely things are blurred, right? Surely things are blurred or maybe cropped in a way that we as the audience can't see anything. No, you would be mistaken. I have never witnessed anything like this. <laughs> Let me finish the, the, the description of the show. I'm getting ahead of myself. So they ask questions and the people in the boxes can't really necessarily speak that much. They're just sort of like gesturing sort of underneath the panels. Um, they, they kick out or remove or reject some people as we go along. And um, each round the like panel thingy goes up higher. So then it goes up to sort of like your shoulders and then the final round it goes up and you see the whole person just standing there in what I can only imagine is a very cold studio. So throughout the episode, the contestant is like asking questions and sometimes there's like little silly like challenges. Um, and then finally they're down to two people. So the person trying to find a date goes off stage, comes back, naked as well. So now we have three people just standing on stage looking at each other completely naked. That final, the contestant picks their person. They then go out on a date. And then at the very end of the episode, we get like how the date went sort of update. Does that make sense? <laughs> so when you think about the concept, you think, I think maybe you're different. I think, okay, this sounds like an experiment that they did for one season maybe like late 90s, early 2000s. It kind of sounds like it could be on MTV for any um, people familiar. MTV released a lot of really messed up TV shows when I was growing up. And this kind of sounds like it could be one of them, but you would be mistaken because currently there are 10 seasons. What? Now I can only imagine that Naked Attraction probably still gets a lot of complaints um, but they are still going. 
going strong, apparently. They are after the watershed, which is actually something that I was not really familiar with in North America. So it's after like a certain period of time. So the, the, the logic, I guess, is like, well, it, there is nudity, but it is, um, how do we pick words to describe this? There's nudity. It's after the watershed. There are no, um, uh, acts. <laughs> Nothing is happening with the nudity. Does that make sense? It's just people, they're just standing. So anyway, so what did I do? I sat down and I watched a bunch of episodes. Um, there are full length episodes available on YouTube from Naked Attraction themselves. They just upload them full nudity in all its weird glory. So I sat down and I watched them. First off, nauseous. I felt, I'll be completely honest, felt a little bit nauseous. There are so many times that the camera can like zoom in on somebody's genitals without feeling like a little bit nauseous. But I have to say, and I hate that I, I, Hey, but this is just, okay, you know what? I kind of get it. I kind of get it. Can you pick someone to date based on their naked body? No. I mean, you could do it. Is it going to be successful? Probably not. I think we all sort of understand that. But I actually kind respect is probably too big of a word. I, was gonna, I don't necessarily respect the show, but I, I, I think I get it. Now I have only watched a handful of episodes. Each episode is two sort of like content, two shows, you know, in into one. Um, so I've seen a bunch of them and they feature people of all shapes and sizes, of all genders, backgrounds, sexual orientation, um, tall, short, skinny, fat, Tattoos, no tattoos, um, all different, all different characteristics. And I actually really like it. That's not what I mean. I get it. I, I don't, do you know what I mean? God, this is a nightmare. Growing up in North America, I don't know how big it was for Brits. Um, for North Americans, The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, wow. And it's still going. So growing up, The Bachelor and The Bachelorette were huge, like absolutely massive dating shows that seemingly felt like it was on twice a year, every year for my entire adolescence. <laughs> and The Bachelor and The Bachelorette is pretty messed up. And I think it's actually quite harmful for the people on the show. That's not funny, but I think it might be true. So basically you would have The Bachelor or The Bachelorette and there would be like a whole bunch of potential dates, like loads of them, I can't remember, like 20 or something ridiculous. And they all like would live in this one house and they were all dating that one person and that person was trying to pick one, but it would go on for weeks and all these people had to like live together and there was like jealousy and whatever. And it was just like a pretty disgusting, harmful show. But the thing that stood out for me with Naked Attraction is that Bachelor, Bachelorette, are typically the hottest people you have ever seen. They are all model quality. They don't look like anybody that you have ever seen before. They are models. <laughs> Whereas, can I say the opposite is true with Naked Attraction? It is regular people. Now, regular, maybe not the best word. What I mean by that is, I think you have to have a certain level of confidence or body positivity to go on a show naked in front of everybody. And it's on the internet, so literally anybody can watch that. So maybe it's not like the normal regular population because I think a lot of us would absolutely not do it, but I so, so appreciate that they're just all shapes. They just like, like they look like regular people. And while I haven't seen all of the seasons and between you and me, I've seen enough. The episodes that I have seen, the like the person picking, pick the, the picker, um, never says anything really mean about the bodies in the boxes. It seems like they try to find something either nice or neutral to say about that person. So they're not just like actively mocking the naked body in the box. Maybe that happens on some episodes. It didn't happen in the ones that I watched. And I really appreciated that because what this show taught me is 
We come in all shapes and sizes and everybody is different and we're all a little bit disgusting, but you know what? That's cool. I also really appreciate the update. A lot of these dating type shows don't have an update, which drives me insane. Like they go on a date and then that's it. So at the end of each episode, they have a like, how did it go thing? And they talk about like how the date went and whatever. And the ones that I saw were actually very positive. They really had a good time and they were going to see each other again. However, people from all over the UK go on this show. So basically every episode that I watched, the two, the two people, the, the daters, the datee and the dater, whatever, you know what I mean? The two people live in completely different areas in the UK. So they're all like, yeah, we're just trying to make, you know, the long distance work. And it's like, all right, that sucks. But I do really appreciate having the little update. Whether it's true or not, or real or sugar-coated, I don't care. I just like having the update. But yeah, they are from all over the place. <laughs> so it's a dating show, but you might end up dating someone from like a thousand miles away. Worst part about the show, one comes to mind. <laughs> so there's actually two. There's two very different elements of the show that I hate. One of them is the challenges. So some of the challenges are fine. One of them, the woman was saying that she really wants someone who's an intellect. And so they had a little quiz. So all the bodies in the brightly lit coffins had like a whiteboard and they had to write their answer and sort of stick it out underneath. Um, and, and that was fine. But one of the other challenges, the person picking a woman, wanted someone who was fun and would go out dancing with them. Do you see where I'm going here? So she asked all the bodies in the coffins to dance. And I don't know if you've ever seen six men <laughs> just <laughs> naked as the day they were born, dancing in a lit up coffin. I think it was from just the waist down. I, <laughs> all I can say is naked attraction, you will be hearing from my therapist. You owe me damages. The other thing that I actually really hate, which maybe is more surprising, I hate watching people on first dates. There are loads of shows, especially again, early 2000s really seem to be like the dating show era. I just can't. I have goosebumps just thinking about it now. I suffer from something called secondhand embarrassment, which means if I see something that is embarrassing or that person has done something cringe, I feel that feeling as if I did it myself. So watching shows where people are on first dates is just painful for me because first dates are always awkward and then you throw in naked attraction and these two people who've already seen each other naked on um, a brightly lit stage are trying to have a date with someone filming them just like the next table over. I just, I hate it. Can you think of anything worse than having your first date filmed? Probably six naked men dancing in boxes. So what have I learned about British culture from Naked Attraction? Well, <laughs> I've learned a lot. As a Canadian, we are typically given one very specific stereotype about British people, um, which is true for some and definitely not true for others. And the stereotype that Canadians and really Americans get is that British people are very posh, very prim, very, um, closed off and reserved and, um, do you, do, you, do you see what I'm picturing in my mind? Like you take it from movies and stuff like posh, um, they speak a certain way and they act, um, a very prim and proper kind of way. And they're not loud or boisterous or doing any nonsense. And while I certainly know some British people who are like that, all you have to do is watch a naked attraction for a couple of minutes and you realize <laughs> that that is not a true reflection of what the full picture is of British culture and what British people are like. So all I can say is if you've been on naked attraction, wow, 
Good for you. I will not be watching that episode. If you know anybody who has been on the show, also, wow, takes a lot of courage, a lot more than I have. <laughs> but I do think in the sea of dating shows, this one actually felt far less problematic than ones I've seen where they are fully dressed, which is just wild. Now, would I recommend Naked Attraction? Not on a full stomach, but I actually, I, I understand the concept and the idea behind it so much more. And again, I kind of want to say I, I respect it. I don't think I'm there yet, but do you know what I mean? Like I kind of, I get it. Bodies of all shapes and sizes, people from all walks of life who are obviously a lot more confident than you or I am. And you know what? Fair play. And yeah, bodies are disgusting and we're all a little bit gross, but we're all disgusting and we're all a little bit gross. So we can take some comfort in that. I feel like I've really grown as a person this last week. <laughs> I feel like my life is now split into two parts, before Naked Attraction and after. And honestly, the, the idea that you could just turn on your TV and watch this show is just wild. Thank you guys so much for watching this Descent Into Madness. If you would like to watch more, which would be totally awesome, check out this one learning about British culture, but through Winston Churchill. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye.